A multi-camera director is the same as any other director. We're telling stories using pictures, but the difference, I guess, is that we're working in studio situations or, or in fact, OB situations with more than one camera. I didn't know what multi-camera directing was, really, um, until one day I stepped into a TV truck in BBC Northern Ireland. There's a gentleman called Colin Lewis directing a show called The Show. Live music, live chat, amazing. And he was literally in full flow. Uh, you know, very talented director. And I was like, oh my God, that is cool. I never set out to be a director. It wasn't in my kind of career list of things to do. Um, I originally wanted to be a, a dancer, so I went to a stage school. Uh, but I still had this um, interest in theatre, TV. So I, want, I knew I wanted to do something within that kind of industry. So I just started uh, doing, applying for lots of kind of running jobs. And, and then from there, I moved on to the BBC in news as a production assistant. So I spent um, a few years um, on the live news, which I think has really stood me in good stead because anything can happen on, on live news. I started to do a lot of uh, floor managing and I, I was a terrible floor manager but I quite liked working in the studios. Um, and one morning, uh, the whole crew came in, we were standing there waiting, and the director was off sick. The exec came in all flustered and said, oh my God, what are we gonna do? And I said, well, I'll, I'll give it a go. Um, and he said, thank you very much. In fact, his parting words were, thank you. If you fuck it up, you're never gonna get another chance. Uh, thankfully, I didn't say anything. Basically, I just sat there and relied on everybody else's <laughs> skills, um, and it didn't it didn't go badly. So I was given another chance. I started off as uh, as an editor. Um, I got an apprenticeship working for the National Cobalt Film Unit, and we were making training training films and uh, and stories about the mining industry. And it was a brilliant training opportunity for me to learn how to make uh, how to make programs, how to tell stories, how to put sequences together. Um, being in an edit suite, um, seeing rushes that come in from other directors is a really good way of learning what works and what doesn't work. I like live, I love live. Um, and it's a completely energizing environment to be in. Um, I also like multi-camera, you know, recording to tape. I love going into an edit suite and, you know, crafting things. I think uh, being a live multi-camera director is, is what I would always want to do. I don't. I, th I find it frustrating sometimes if I'm doing a pre-recorded show and oh no not another take oh no we've got to do it again and then it goes away to an edit and then it's not it's never finished but whereas on a live show um, it's out there and it's it's done and it has to be good and you have to be everyone has to be on the money and you have to deliver every single time um, and so I think that's what I really enjoy about it is, is that adrenaline buzz. I used to do a show called the Saturday Picture Show from Manchester and again, the adrenaline buzz of kind of doing a, a live show for the first time. I remember um, we would rehearse on Fridays till about six o'clock in the evening and then kind of go home, not sleeping at all during the night. You know, you sort of wake up at four in the morning uh, to be at the studio at six, ready to start rehearsing. It was a really kind of, um, you know, adrenaline fueled kind of anxiety moments, but you know, you get through it. I think the secret of doing the job properly is you, you can't make decisions when you are insanely stressed or your blood's up. Obviously, I think if, if you, if somebody took my blood pressure during a live show, it'd probably be relatively high, but you have to operate on an even keel because you can't, you can't make good decisions if you are insanely stressed. There are shots on the Olympics that I missed. Um, there's two or three shots, key shots actually, that I missed. And I absolutely can tell you, I have nightmares now. I, I, I wake up some mornings cold and I'm reliving why I didn't get those shots. Strictly is a very stressful, challenging show to work on, um, mainly because it, it's live and when you're live, anything can go wrong. And so um, you want to get to that point of going live with everything being rehearsed 100% and in place. And, and so you know then that if everybody knows what they're doing, if something goes wrong, then it's much easier to, to fix it because people know where they are within the show and what they should be doing. Whereas if you went on air and things were still crazy and under-rehearsed and if something went wrong at that point, then you've got no hope of saving anything. You can tie yourself up in knots, both visually and technically, with cameras bumping into each other and you know just th simple things like that. If you don't know, if you, you have to have quite a innate knowledge of what you're asking certain people to do with their cameras um, or else 
you know, there's a lot more dynamism in a music performance than there would be in a piece of narrative. So if you've got two cranes moving and a steady cam and, so, and you know, three peds and a handheld, you could get to a point, unless you know exactly what you're doing, where they could all be in each other's shots and then you're fucked. Sorry, then you're, you know, then you're not in a good place, shall we say. I'm, in, I'm involved in two kinds of projects. Projects where I am heavily involved in the conception so, you know, maybe the, 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 the layout of the room, the conception of the event, most often award shows or things like Super Bowls and so on. So, and, and, and when you create something like that, it's a very different process to, say, shooting a DVD for Robbie Williams or U2 or Usher. And when you are working with someone else's art, I always feel really, really... I feel a huge burden on my shoulders because they have put huge amounts of effort into creating this show. They're expending huge amounts of energy performing this show and I have got to be as good as them. Physical time in the seat is much more important than any training you could do because you don't know what it's like until you're actually doing it in anger, if you like. On, even on a show like The Graham Norton Show that is now in its 15th series on BBC One, I think the team are always wanting to make the show the best it can possibly be. And in fact, um, two weeks ago, um, we were sort of doing our usual rehearsal and suddenly kind of came up with an idea of using a camera in a different way than we'd, we'd used it before. And, and realizing that even after 15 series, there are small little changes that you can suddenly come up with that actually make a big difference to the way the show looks. Watch and listen and learn from everybody around you and never assume that you know everything there's always something that's going to trip you up or always someone that's worked on something and you don't understand how something works so um and it's good to listen to other people and take on board um their experience a please and thank you gets you much more than a shout that's the most important thing you've got to respect the people around you because you can't do your job without them and uh if you get angry, don't get angry with anybody. Get angry with the situation, because it's never personal. Everybody's trying to do their best.